Hi Joel and everyone at Hope in the Harvest. Hope you guys are having a great time there. Thanks so much for this opportunity uh, just to share with you. So I'm Russell Godwood. I'm based here in the UK and we're just to the east of London, the city of London. And we're pursuing no place left across the UK. And I've been doing that for about the last four years. So just, you know, prior to that, I was uh, a church leader. I've been a church leader for 25 years prior to that. Uh, 18 of those years as a senior pastor or a senior team leader. And, uh, you know, I really reached a point where I, I guess, you know, there was this strong, strong desire to really learn how do we make disciples of people that are far from God. And here's the reality. You know, as a pastor leading a great church, and we're having a great time. Do you know what I realized looking back? I didn't know how to make disciples of people that were far from God. Um, I met some people, Steve and Michelle Addison, over there in Brisbane in Australia now. And uh, they just came and did some training for us. And one of the things they did, was just begin to take us into the harvest. And here's something I learned. So, you know, I've been a pastor for 18 years. We, we're leading a great church, not because of us. It's a great church, you know, a great bunch of people. We've got some fantastic things going on. Um, and Steve and Michelle start taking us into the harvest and we just start engaging people, offering to pray for them, sharing the gospel mouth to ear. And um, I didn't think you could do that. Like, seriously, I did not think you could just walk up to people. I remember saying to Michelle one day, you know, I don't think I'm up for this. I don't think I'm ready for this. And she just smiled at me and laughed and said, no, come on, Russ, let's go. Let's go find some people and just share with them. And off we went. And to my surprise, like it worked. The tools worked. But she seemed to just have this confidence in the Lord that everything would work out. So I came home. I remember sitting with this young guy, 25 year old guy, I just shared the three circles with him. I said to him, I said, Dapo, what do you think of that? He said, that's great. I said, you fancy coming out into town and maybe we'll just give this a go. We'll give it a try and we'll go into the harvest and see if, see if we can share it with some people. So that Wednesday, we took a couple of hours together and off we went just into our small town, 30,000 people where we live. And we just started saying hello to people. We would offer to pray for them. Hi, we're out caring for our community. Could we pray for you? We would just ask, is there anything specific you'd like us to pray for? Then pray for them. You know, name of Jesus, power of God, whatever whatever people were up for. But, but simple at the same time. And then we would just ask, can we share with you how we came near to God? And people everywhere started saying yes. It was just incredible. And, and this was the shift for me. I began to get a heart for people who were lost, who were far from God. I was no longer prepared just to sit in my church or in our meetings and just wait for people to come to us. This was massive. And then I realized this. People were ready. And the gospel works. The gospel works in 21st century secular Britain, in a small town in the east of London. But actually... It's worked everywhere we've been. It's just been incredible. And that was massive. A heart for lost people. The gospel works. The harvest is ready. People are waiting for us to just open our mouths and share mouth to ear with an invitation for people to follow Jesus. That's been huge for me. And uh, just a small story. It's a personal story. I'm quite pumped about it today. Um, so I have a people map. I don't know if you guys have a people map and it lists out maybe five or 10 people that I pray for. I say every day, but most days this year I've been praying for those people. And uh, I have a neighbor, a guy, 45 year old guy, and he's on my list to pray for. And I've especially been praying for him in this lockdown period. Um, we've really focused on our people map. How can we engage those people, the people we already know? And um, just last night, I was out in the garden and uh, he walks by out the back of our house. I just stuck my head over the wall, called across. Hi, man, how you doing? So he comes over, a bit sheepish, a um, bit cautious. He said, oh, Russ, I've, I, I, I've just been, been dreading seeing you. 
He said, I had a row with the neighbor the other night and the police were called and everything. And he said, I thought you knew about it. And he said, I just really was concerned about what you would think of me. He said, like, you're the nicest guy in the street. And, you know, I just laughed and I said, you know, Alan, I've not always been like this. There was a time in my life when, and I just shared my story with him, which is a story of how I was wayward and rebellious and how I met Jesus. And I got to share my story with this 45 year old guy, you know, who has a broken relationship behind him and all sorts of stuff going on in his life. And as I shared my story with him about Jesus, he just stood there and listened. And then he starts talking to me about faith and about believing some of this stuff himself. And that just led us on slowly, just to the point where I said, you know, when this lockdown's over, do you fancy meeting up? You come around here for a beer, or we'll go out for a drink or a coffee. And I said, we could just sit, sit and uh, I'll share some more stories with you about Jesus. And he looked at me, he said, Russ, he said, would you do that? He said, I would love that. And that's my, li- that's my little story from last night. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not huge. The guy hasn't turned and believed on Jesus yet. But, you know, for the first time, I've been praying for this guy most days this year. And yesterday, yesterday, I got that breakthrough. You know, it's May and I got that breakthrough. I got to share my story with him and I've got sort of a yellow light and an opportunity to follow up with him. So that's been fantastic. So for us here in the UK, we're pursuing no place left. Could we get to a point where there is no place left in these British Isles, where people are not hearing the gospel mouth to ear with an invitation to follow Jesus, become a disciple and join the church. Could we get to that place? And we're just raising up teams for every region across the UK, Uh, training broadly, uh, working locally, uh, meeting the people we know and then the people we don't know and just sharing, just sharing generously wherever we can, just with anyone that will listen. And uh, recently we've been reading a lot. When our churches have met online, we've been just looking a lot at Acts 2, sort of 36 through 47, just that vision for a healthy church. And you know, one of the things that struck us as Peter stands up there on the day of Pentecost and he preaches the gospel to these crowds of people. Um, he then says this to them. They, they sort of respond. And uh, he then says this verse to them. This promise is for you. It's for your children. And it's for all who are far off. All whom the Lord our God will call. This gospel, guys, it's for you. It's for your children. It's for everyone around you that you know. And it's for all who are far off, all the people you haven't met yet. Guys, what's it going to take for us, for us as followers of Jesus, to rise up and begin to take this seriously? What's it going to take for us to begin to go? to engage people just by offering to pray for them? What's it going to take for us to open our mouth and maybe just share a simple gospel, mouth to ear, with an invitation to follow Jesus and become a disciple? Guys, what's it going to take to pursue no place left? Maybe just in your street, maybe just in your family even, like all all you and your children and those that are connected to you. What's it going to take? What about your, your region? or your country even. Guys, what's it going to take in these last days to go with the gospel, proclaiming the gospel generously to everyone we meet? God bless you guys. Have a great time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity just to share with you. God bless. Bye-bye.